2019. So today is 27th uh, June 2020. We are having, we are meeting in virtually to actually we are planned on physical uh, program has to be conducted for the Angur branch uh, regarding what are the services, how CA service can he can export his service and get benefited. Now you all know this all COVID has came. Now it is challenges members are uh, before starting the session. We are discussing how the office are working and all. Now the export of service, we can sit it in home and we can provide it. Many sir is also and vice chairman of service export promotion council. Their members and the make note that the today's session is very important session for the members in the younger youngsters and also members practicing in big size. Today is an ICA is celebrating SMP day. The ICA is having around 5, 5.30. We are having in a program from the head office to celebrate SMP day. So also we are planned this session very uniquely. On behalf of all the managing committee members of Bangor Bench, on behalf of all the river, I wholeheartedly welcome CA Sunil Talati sir for the today's program. Welcome you sir. Thank you. Dear members, I wholeheartedly welcome all the viewers for the today's sessions. As you are aware, the today's session is in 35th, the Bangor branch is able to manage, conduct 35 sessions during this uh, lockdown time. Even we are more to conduct many more programs for the benefit of the members. And our objective is that Dhana Dasova. Dhana Dasova means Dhana and Daso. Dhana means knowledge and Dasova means without any expectation, we can contribute and we can disseminate your knowledge to the members. And today is the right topic and the right personality with us. I request uh, our Bangor Bank Secretary C.S. Nivas T to formally introduce today's uh, uh, speaker C.S. Sunil Tarati sir to the all our viewers. Over to Srinivas. Thank you, Chairman, for rendering welcome address. Uh, it is my proud privilege to give a brief introduction of uh, Sunil Talati, sir. And despite, I, I can say that there is no introduction is required anyway for the benefit of new member. Uh, I thought of giving a brief introduction of sir. He was the torch bearer and he is the president of our institute during 2007 and 8. It was the first time in the 70 years of the history of ICA, first person from the Gujarat has elected as the president. He was elected securing highest force in the entire western region of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and was appointed as vice chairman in the same year. By qualification, sir is a MCOM, LLB, FCA, graduated from HL College of Commerce. He was appointed as a public representative in the governing body of Ahmedabad Stock Exchange by Government of India, Ministry of Finance in 1985 and 1986. He held so many positions in so many public organizations like Rotary Club, Junior JC, and Junior Chamber of Commerce. He was elected president of Chartered Accountants Association Ahmedabad for the year 1988-89 and also selected as member of the Executive Committee of Gujarat Chamber of Commerce and Industry Ahmedabad for the year 1988 and 89. He has written several papers on tax laws and has given talks in various seminars, conferences and meetings all over Gujarat as well as all over the country. For almost 20 years, he was the co-author of Ready Reckoner, which is published in Gujarati and regularly contributed uh, various articles in Financial Express and uh, was regularly writing as a contributor and editor in monthly Gujarati book called uh, Tax Reporter. He was elected uh, one more prestigious uh, body that is governing, he was elected as a member of governing council, accounting, auditing and bookkeeping service sector, governed by SEPC, set up by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India, for consecutively of three terms, sir. that is 2015-17, 17-19 and again in the term of 1921. Recently, he has been elected as vice chairman of the SEPC for the term September 2019 to 2021. 
It is the first time in the history of Gujarat that chart chartered accountant has been elected from the state of Gujarat as a member and chairman of such a reputed institution under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. In 2017, he has been appointed, appointed by Government of Gujarat as a member in the Fee Regulatory Committee for all medical colleges in Gujarat. He has also been appointed in the Special Committee of Coal India Limited for considering valuation of all coal mines. With this brief introduction, I once again welcome you, sir, and I also welcome all the members uh, for today's, today's program. Over to you, sir. Yeah, so, thank you, Srinivas. So, sir, before uh, ending our session, I requested you. Now they are becoming a little bit panic about this COVID. And uh, just this, apart from this session, you can also give us some tips how we can overcome. And also, you can uh, the networking of the CA firms. Many young members are uh, thinking how it can be make it happen really. So you are the right person uh, to guide our members uh, in this regard. And apart from uh, your uh, subject on the apologies to CA in export of service. So what to you, sir? Thank you so much, Mr. Ravinder, Chairman of the Bangalore branch. Mr. Srinivas, Honorary Secretary of the Bangalore branch, other office bearers or the managing committee members, and my dear professional brothers and sisters from Bangalore and all nearby areas. It's indeed a matter of great pleasure for me to be with all of you on this virtual webinar. The moment the chairman telephoned me, I immediately accepted the invitation very willingly and smilingly because one or some of I had very close relations and very old relations with Bangalore branch for a number of years. And I still remember when I was vice president, honorable chief minister was the chief guest. And then I was the president, Bangalore branch and hosted one of the largest ever um, regional conference uh, at Bangalore. So there are fond memories in my mind with regard to the Bangalore and special love and affection for all you Bangaloreans, chartered accountants. So it's a pleasure meeting all of you. Though I am not able to see you all, I'm sure I'm in your heart and mind when I talk to you. And you should be equally frank and absolutely free. If you have any questions or any points, kindly keep it in mind. You can send it to secretary by the notes or you can ask in the end of the presentation. I would try to finish 30, 40 minutes before the schedule closure so that we have sufficient time for interaction and questions. Well, as in the introduction, you must have heard with regard to the SEPC. Now, what you must be wondering, because many of you must be wondering, what is this? This is Exclusive Service Export Promotion Council. And you must be knowing that there have been many export promotion council across the country for leather export promotion, for handicraft promotion exposure. In Bangalore, there are separate for silk export promotion council. So all manufacturers and traders were having different export promotion councils, which are all governed by the Ministry of Commerce. And Commerce Ministry were giving them special packages, special incentives, various benefits and licenses. But there was nothing about the service. And since the service tax was levied, government realized the importance of recognizing the importance of service sector in our economy. Because all you know, the contribution of service tax was substantial high, which has now been replaced by GST. And contribution of service sector as such, including two biggest companies in Bangalore, as you all know, there are many such mid-sized companies also from Bangalore who are rendering wonderful services online services of BPO and KPO from Bangalore and nearby areas. So Bangalore's are no new so far as it comes to the technology is concerned. But very few people are aware that if as a chartered accountant you render services and the services are exported, meaning thereby it is given to a citizen outside India, in outside country, and then if you receive inward remittance in foreign exchange currency, then government gives you special incentive. And for that incentive, this SCPC is registered. Besides that, it monitors, it encourages, as chairman mentioned, every year or alternate year, we try to hold an international and national conference whereby B2B functions are organized. Members from foreign countries come here, meet chartered accountants, meet other service exporters in various areas. In fact, Service Export Promotion Council, we had 12 championship areas. One of the biggest areas was tourism, then we have engineering, we have law, 
we have many such areas medical hospitality and out of all these 12 champion services the top five services have been specially recognized by government and i'm very happy to inform you that in top five accounting and auditing services is number at number four so we should be all happy that accounting and auditing services has its place at number four in now instead of 12 champion services all the services that are rendered in india outside country have been recognized and is under the umbrella of scpc so there are almost 92 services in the country which are being exported and in turn generates foreign precious important valuable foreign exchange for us so out of all these 92 we are number four in this country in this place so that's very very important now what is important is today's session is export of service by chartered accountants this sounds something curious something important something attractive something novel and something very close to us so as a chartered accountant whatever service whatever consultancy whatever auditing whatever tax or indirect gst practice i do if i get a foreign client my entire blood pressure is different my vibrations are different and my entire thinking process and service rendering aspect and process becomes changed different and in a higher pedestal so we all are aware that we are all keen to see that yes i give my services not only to my citizens not only to my local residents of india but also to a foreign client foreign uh, countrymen outside india and that gives an additional weightage to my professional practice so that's very and in two aspects and as chairman mentioned i'll also deal with how to increase your practice grow your practice by networking and joining partnership i'll try to devote 10 15 minutes on that but coming to the overview of this export service i thought let me divide my presentation into two aspects one i shall be dealing with the macro aspects because that is very important to know i shall be reading certain things i'll be talking certain things which you may find more philosophical but it is not so it is very important to understand and digest that why export why export of services and why chartered accountants should export the services of accounting and auditing and therefore it is very important to have an overview of it accounting services are covered under the professional services in the general agreement trade and service that is called gats you all must be aware of world trade organization that is wto and as you all know we have a separate committee of wto in our institute and there are chartered accountants who are rendering exclusive services of wto how dumping duty is to be levied how it is not to be levied how various duties are to be uh, reduced increased apportioned etc so there are chartered accountants who are exclusively practicing on wto since we are part of the member of wto and we have signed the agreement with various countries under wto treaty so auditing and accounting services is one of the services under wto gats gats and what are those services those services are core activities of all accounting firms including audits audits of entities and audits of merged and merger entities a lot of merger and acquisition take place we have insolvency services we have tax advisory services we have investment services and we have management consulting services so this kind of six services are covered under the accounting and auditing services if if you are exporting one of these six services then you are in a position to get the benefit of export of services and consequential benefit of SEP. Once you start exporting, you should be become, you must become member of Service Export Promotion Council. A token fee of only 20,000 rupees is there by which you are providing all the information, knowledge, material from time to time. And as I told you, if you earn foreign exchange, you will get the incentive. What are those incentives? Those incentives earlier it used to be five percent of the total value of the export foreign exchange earned by you so if during the year you have rendered 10 lakhs of rupees and by rendering accounting services to a foreign country and 10 lakhs rupees are received actually in india then five percent of that worth of license is being granted to you under that license of the 10 lakh of five percent of 10 lakh that is fifty thousand rupees you can import any item without any import duty so that's a great advantage suppose if you don't want to import certain things then this licenses are offi officially tradable and saleable 
you can sell them in the market. And this 50,000 worth of uh, license, you can easily sell in around 47 to 48,000 rupees to another importer who is genuinely in need of importing certain material. So this is the biggest advantage to be a member of SEPC. So that's point one. Now let us understand the global perspective of the entire export gamut. Accounting services generate 495 billion US dollar, almost 500 billion US dollar revenue during the year 1718. Trade in services, including professional services like accounting, has been expanding very rapidly in recent years. This has increased to the earlier just 200 to 300 since last five, six years. If I can say from 1415 onwards, there is a tremendous increase in the rendering of accounting and auditing services. The accounting services market is expected to reach a huge amount of $900 billion, $900 billion by 2022. Now, of course, we know this COVID-19 and Corona pandemic has taken place. All businesses have come to halt. But the best thing that has happened is, so far as accounting and auditing services are concerned, it is blessing in disguise. As you all must be aware and you have experience, you are not able to go to office. You are not able to income tax. You are not able to go to GST office. You are not able to go to your client place to do audit. But sitting at home, you are able to function so many things including writing of the accounts, examination of accounts, that is auditing, and in turn submitting your various audit reports or opinion, etc. So you can understand that sitting at home and without going to office, you were in a position during this three and a half months time to do so many things sitting at home. And you didn't never felt that you are totally jobless or without work, which has been felt by lawyers, particularly in the highest sector because no courts are functioning. So all lawyers are totally jobless. In fact, you will be surprised that two days before Gujarat High Court in a special writ petition allowed the uh, petition of the advocates that advocates should now be not restricted to their code of conduct and they are allowed to do any other trade or business to maintain their family and to earn the livelihood. So advocates have started doing various other jobs and things which hitherto they were not able to do. Same is with us friends. Chartered accountants, we are strictly governed by code of ethics, code of conduct. We cannot do any other business, trade or commerce or industry. And we have to do, if you are having COP, only practice. And if you are in the industry, you only serve to your employer. But nothing further than that. But the biggest advantage to chartered accountants in COVID-19 is many, many chartered accountants, I would say. There may be some unlucky, some not so beneficial. But otherwise, many, many chartered accountants are in a position to perform and do the work sitting at the home. So this is the biggest advantage in COVID-19. So $900 billion is a market estimated by WTO that would reach by 2022. Maybe because of this COVID, as I mentioned initially, it may be lesser to some extent because of ultimately India is under in service. There has to be a giver in USA or in UK. And if there are no giver, there cannot be one-way traffic. So it has to be a two-way traffic. So the next point is accounting and auditing service is largely accelerating due to lack of in-house expertise on accounting standard that is compelling enterprises to depend on external accounting and auditing services providers. Now, why this has happened, friends? And you'll be surprised to note, not only in India, but world over, there is a thank you, shortage of accountants person who can write the accounts. And when I say accountants, accountant means those who know the accounts correctly, one, those who know how to write the accounts on computer and software, two, three, those accountants who know what is accounting standards and therefore write accounting correctly. So knowledge of accounting standard and accountants having knowledge of accounting standards are very few. In fact, in fact, there is a tremendous shortage and the WTO has estimated that there is an immediate need of 1 million accountants, 1 million accountants in Asian countries itself. That's India, Pakistan, and all, if we say our nearby countries, 1 million, 10 lakh charter, 10 lakh accountants are required to write and complete the accounts of so many traders, businessmen, and commerce. 
and this is based on the statistics which i shall share with you later on so especially tax compliance and audit service segment companies have the majority share in this accounting and auditing services and we are the only person in india we like 25000 minus 60% if reduce hardly 80 or 90000 chartered accountant friends be attentive and clear only 80 to 90000 chartered accountants in india to serve this millions of traders and commerce and industry people to write their accounts and in turn audit wherever it is applicable so this is very very important and very exemplary example with regard to the important position of a chartered accountant in the society in the economy now what is the indian accounting market having talked to you about global market let us understand what is indian economy market indian accounting and financial services revenue since last 4 year is increasing at an average rate of 7% in the every single business segment and every single area it is not that it is more in south and less in eastern region or it is more in north and less in central region on an average the growth is near by 7% across the country so that's a very positive positive indication with regard to the growth in accounting sector the second point is the industry anticipates 8% growth in 2021 and 2122 we all know that our prime minister had said that we want to make a 5 trillion economy though recession started before this covid 19 in the month of october november december we were feeling that there is an element of recession but when it comes to accounting it would never feel that much impact and feeling as compared to the business because in a business when even if he is suffering loss even if having a less profit he certainly needs the service of an accountant he certainly needs the service of a chartered accountant and therefore the impact was not that heavily felt and therefore government estimated that the growth of accounting and auditing service in india would be at the rate of 8% in 2021 and 2122 because of the rapid economic de development proliferation of digital accounting changing business regulations growing professional workforce increased foreign direct investments and government initiatives to boost and attract business such as startup make in india and of course the new implementation of gst and digital india movement because of all these movements there is a continuous growth in this area of accounting and auditing india's accounting services market is expected to witness a very high growth in professional workforce in coming years and that is where i am emphasizing the importance of the role of a chartered accountant i feel though there is negativism though people would say that no no it is very simple and easy to speak on the lectures but ground reality is that people are expecting and accepting the tax audit at 3000 and 5000 rupees in government tenders on one side for one form verification certain ca firms file the tender at 150 rupees per form there is another chartered account which is filing it at 50 paisa half a rupee per form this is the difference in the tendering and many chartered accounts are going much below their standard when they want to grab such kind of work that is really unfortunate i will come to that aspect later on but notwithstanding that we have a phenomenal phenomenal gap between the work available and in fact actual work which we expect and charge the fees so charging of the fees is very very important which many of our chartered accountants do not give that much of importance and that is the reason that many cas are charging much lower and that is the reason that we feel unwarranted very unhealthy competition in the actual accounting and auditing practices when it comes to cop and chartered accountants in practice but the second point is we must appreciate that icai institute of chartered accountants of india is the second highest number of professional in the world we have now crossed the figure of 3 lakh 25000 and i'll just explain you the difference of the speed with which we are growing it is not that the results are liberal it is not that the grace marks are given it is not that many tuition classes across the country have been mushroomed and therefore people are learning more from tuitions and not attending articles but sheer strength of newcomers has increased when i was the president in the first july 2007 the total number of members in country was a sweet figure of 14 15 
that is 1,41,516. That was in 2007. We are now in 2019-20, or we may say 2021, and the figure has gone to 3,25,000. So 1,50,000 right from 1949 to 2007. 1,50,000, less than 1,50,000. And more than 150,000 from 2007 to 2019-20. Imagine, in 12 years, we have crossed what we took time for 35 years or 45 years. So this is the speed with which accountants are growing, accounting and auditing profession is growing. According to the tax expert in India, now this is very important. 9 million companies have come under the jurisdiction of GST regulation. Encouraging more of the tax and accounting consultants are coping out. 9 million registrations are there, 90 lakhs, and it would cross 12 million by 21. That was the expectation because of this pandemic. Maybe let us say by March 22, it would reach to 12 million. 120 lakh people divided by just 1,60,000. How much potential for GST practice? How much potential for accounting practice? And how much potential for auditing practice? An estimated 1.3 million tax and accounting consultants will be needed to meet this demand, not only in Indian companies, but also for foreign companies who are looking to expand their businesses in India. Since last five years, we have seen, and after the last year's budget and prime minister's address to the nation, we have seen the government has opened up. Though they have, have been in India, though in certain tenders around about 200 crores foreigners will not be allowed to participate, but government has opened the door for so many sectors that a lot of foreign direct investment is flowing and lots of foreign countries, are foreign entities and foreign enterprises are coming into India. Whom they will go to? Only and only Indian chartered accountants. Who are at present they are going to? By and large, to big firms, big firms. Why? That's the reason we lack networking, we lack strength, we lack demonstration of our united efforts, and that is why we go to the big levels and don't come to short levels. Ultimately, in big levels also, who are they working? All charter accountants like me and you, who instead of doing their own practice, decided to work as a slave in those firms, work from morning to late midnight, get a handsome salary. But ultimately, the label of big four is available to them, which is not available to us. And that is the style, attitude, and change of approach which is required. And I'm sure by end of my presentation, I will be able to see some change there too. According to Silicon of India, according to Silicon India, Indian tax consulting market actually grew at 9% during the last two years. And the total revenue was 42,500 crore. 42,500 crore was the gross revenue received by service sector in India. The, the, it was certainly include all your big company like Wipro and big companies in Bangalore, including certain close companies like Satyam, who have changed the corners, and other companies. Infosys as the, one of the biggest names we have. But the total revenue from all this is 42,500 crore. This is the revenue. Globally, four companies are dominating in this, as I mentioned to you. Who are those four? As you all know, I did not name them. PwC, Deloitte, KPMG, and EY. These are the four companies who are dominating this sector. And it is now time for us to see that let the dominance continue. But we should have our own place, our own recognition, our own mark, and our own standing in this export market of services by chartered accounting. This, though... The largest Indian consultants which have taken place in the last five years are BMR Advisors, Dhruva Advisors, and Nanjia and Company. These three Indian firms have also now shown their presence felt, and they are also earning in millions. Or in Indian language, they have really started the receipts in crores of rupees from lakhs of rupees. So that's a matter of great importance. According to the WTO data, when I was initially referring to about WTO treaty, Accounting services exports from India was packed at 28 million US dollars. 28 million dollars. That was the total receipts from US alone. And other destinations were USA, 
Germany, Netherlands, Italy, UK and Australia. Note down friends, these are the countries where we as chartered accountant can export our services. There are issues on language which I'll come to later on, but subject to that, Italy and Netherlands and Germany, where English is not that freely spoken, even there they are in search of good accountants and chartered accountants like us. Now, what is India's advantage in a global market? Why India is preferred by all these countries? India's accounting service sector is leaping, as I mentioned, since last two decades. And availability of skilled accountants, workforce, latest accounting and financial softwares are increasing on day-to-day -day basis, if not weekly or monthly basis. Low cost of labor and high security to the clients is making India most popular outsourced destination for all accounting and financial services. The per minute per hour per minute per hour charges which we are charging, it is so low compared to what they pay to the chartered accounts in these foreign countries that it will be an eye opening for all of us. And that is why they feel that if I have to pay hundred dollars per hour or fifty dollars per hour to my CA or CPA in this country, in foreign country, I am getting just 2,000 rupees, much, much less per hour, a chartered account from India, doing much better work, much faster work, much quicker work, and most perfect work on the basis of the contract and agreement understood. So that is the biggest advantage. So in this global market, there are five major points which I would like to share with you. First is highly skilled professionals. India has the highest number of accounting professionals. We are the second largest body in the world, we know, after USA. But ICA have more close relations with Institute of England and Wales. And you all know we have done MRA, mutual recognition agreement with that also. So with that strength, we have more CA available who can do this work. So due to the availability of high-skilled professionals, large number of foreign companies are operating successfully in India in the form of joint venture and also shared services centers in India and take competitive advantage. This is what is happening. High skilled Indian accounting professionals and firms provide quality service at a comparatively very low price and attracting very huge projects, both from developed and developing countries. So what is developing in countries, I need not say you are in Bangalore, there are hundreds and thousands of chartered accountants who have migrated to UAE and they are all working in UAE with a very handsome salary. But besides Karnataka and Kerala, who are migrating to UAE, <clears throat> there are many countries where they are in genuine need of Indian chartered accountants, particularly African countries, particularly seven other European countries. Language is a big problem. And our Institute of Chartered Accountants of India has started foreign language courses for chartered accountants. With the sole purpose that our chartered accountants learn this foreign language. And the moment we learn this foreign language, we can write email, we can take their work, we can write the accounts in their language and give them. And the best advantage is they would give you all the work in the evening when they go home. We receive it here in the morning. We work from morning to evening at Bangalore or at Ahmedabad. We email them back, send it back by the evening. So when they go to their office in the morning, our ready-made work is available to them. So it is the fastest work available by them by outsourcing the work to India. Second point is accounting syllabus aligned with the global standard. We must salute our institute for this purpose. Indian syllabus of chartered accountancy, cost accountancy, and company secretary all, all have uh, aligned their courses, subjects, various other topics questions and answers in examination papers, they are absolutely in the global standards, creating tremendous opportunities for Indian and accounting and auditing professions to cater the global market. This is why big MNC prefer to have their shared services in India. Majority of the big fours who are in USA and Australia, they are sending their work to their big four counterpart in India as compared to other countries. So that is a, one of the reasons that they employ so many hundreds and thousands of chartered accountants in their BPO market and BPO services. And you must be knowing, Bangalore, one of the big four has largest office, employing more than 5,000 to 7,000 chartered accountants under one roof. 
The third important point is friendly outsourcing facilities. India has very flexible and supporting outsourcing policies, which is promoting accounting and financial services outsourced from India. Security and confidentiality of financial data is completely ensured in India. Use of secure FTP server, encrypted emails, and other documents uploaded and downloaded are having all kinds of privacy. In any foreign contract, I will come to when it comes to micro level, the most, 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 uh, most important thing in a foreign contract when you render them service of accounting is of top secrecy. Every single data that comes to you has to be on an absolute top secret. No other laptop or computer can share it. And when you send it also, it has to be by the same software, same laptop and same computer should not be shared or viewed or can be uh, cached up or verified by any other authority whatsoever except the main person. So this is the security that they want and this is the security that we in India can give them at its best. The fourth point is cost saving services like nowhere. As I mentioned, India is providing best professional accounting services at least minimum by 50% compared to the other developed countries. Outsourcing accounting services for this cost do not only help all these big entities to grow, but they help all small business and startups who are looking to save costs through streamlining accounting process and focusing on private area business. What is happening nowadays, the moment the person starts the business or service or an industry, he needs an accountant to write all his accounts. And to have a full-time accountant is a very big expenditure. To have a part-time accountant, there is no surety about his coming and rendering of service. And therefore, the system has developed, if not a fashion, the style and modus operandi has developed. People hire agencies like chartered accountants. You write down my account. You write my accounts. And you be in charge. And you all know, friends, as per the code of ethics, you cannot do the audit of an entity of whom you are writing the accounts. Don't do the audit. Do the accounting work. You will be surprised, friends. Most of your friends who are in USA, you must be knowing those who have done in CPA, 75% of CPA in USA are doing more work of accounting rather than auditing. And because the auditing profession is in a very limited few people, very limited few firms. But CPAs are in thousands, in millions. Well, USA is the biggest number of CPA in the world. 75% of them are in accounting work and of course the taxation work income tax is definitely there compliance is very much there all cpas are doing it but as compared to auditing work they are more in accounting work so that's very important and last fifth important point quality and customized service with the use of latest technology indian companies provide high quality service with the latest technology and customized solution to foreign business as per their business need India is one stop destination for all accounting and financial business requirements like financial analysis, payroll processing, tax preparation, and bookkeeping. Particularly, payroll and bookkeeping is the biggest area where we chartered accountants can immediately start our work and throw our shelf in the wide oceans of this work. Tremendous, tremendous work. So, there the employees are in hundreds and thousands, and their payroll which includes so many benefits, so many deductions, including tax and amenities. It is very, very huge work. And many Indian chartered accountants and firms are doing this work. So this is also very, very important, and we must appreciate that. So when this is what I just discussed about you, what are the global perspective and how they look at the India. But as compared to that, we have to be ready. That yes, heck against that. Am I ready? Is my government giving me sufficient help and support is institute is helping me so let us understand what our indian government and our institute initiative in that there are six points into this first is government has opened up fdi at 100 percent to automatic growth which is allowed in accounting and bookkeeping service to boost investment and export so for all accounting and auditing firm there is 100 percent automatic approval you did not go to reserve bank of india for separate approval Implementation of companies in 2013 and in IFR, International Financial Reporting Standard, which is INDES, has been a catalyst 
of growing demand for Indian CA in Western India, Singapore, and Australia. In fact, you'll be surprised. It was during my tenure as a president that I announced that, yes, we will adopt IFRS from 2011. And we made it along, and government was extremely happy. But there was a continuous pressure from government that when you are going to adopt IFRS, world over IFRS is being adopted. Why India is lacking? So we announced it that, okay, from 1411, India will adopt IFRS. It took some more time to adopt it fully. But as you all know, over a period of time, at 15, we completely adopted. India has came into force, and all our chartered accountants are now well versed with IFRS, that is India's. So that is a very, very important point. The third point, earlier government wanted to allow foreign audit firms to do a joint audit. But that was strongly objected. So government is now encouraging that, okay, big fours are there, Another Indian firm should be there to do the joint audit. Like this, many Indian firms are getting the joint audit of big entities. That is very important. So multinational foreign firms have been done away with. But we at Institute fought to the nail to see that, yes, this kind of foreign invasion should be stopped. Big Four also, under the name of Big Four, they are also doing so many things which strictly code of ethics and code of conduct do not permit. And, and now they are aware. NFR has come, government has taken up action, institute is also taking appropriate actions. So they have changed their style, they have changed their methodology. But still, and by paying royalty to foreign firms and paying royalty to outside India, this foreign big four firms should not dominate and do monopoly situation in India. And ICI is also working very hard on that score, that how Indian chartered accountants can come up to that. And you all must be knowing, Prime Minister last time mentioned an accountant firm who should compete or should be equivalent to Big Four. So when our Prime Minister is very keen to see that, yes, Indian firms grow to that level. That is why, we, as I mentioned, our Institute of Chartered of India has done MRA, Mutual Recognition Agreement, with five countries, and it, which includes Australia, which includes England, which includes Canada, and many other countries. So with this, we are trying to encourage that how our chartered accountants can go there, appear in just one or two exams, and straight away can do practice or can do accounting work in foreign countries. The next is WTO for ICI, along with WTO, initiated committee for export in WTO, as I mentioned. And they are serving overseas and those having offices or services abroad. Facilitated networking of Indian chartered accountants globally and to protect interest of profession and chartered accountants in WTO area, GATS area. Also, I see having realized that is when government is encouraging this much and they want to see that, yes, we should be ready. ICI also came up in the last year and in this year, very last year provision for March 20, three crore rupees and it will be up to 35 crore rupees. Separate provision has been made for technology and skill development of Indian chartered accountants. So number of softwares will now be made available to Indian chartered accountants, either free of charge or a very, very substantial discount. And appropriate training will be given to chartered accountants to develop their skill on this software and technology. So that is the initiative of Institute. And lastly, Institute is encouraging all chartered accountants to join hands with Bhagaran Institute that is Cost Accountant Institute and Company Secondary Institute. We have permitted the partnership. Unfortunately, it is not happening for various reasons. But if we in our firm develop or have a company secretary and a cost accountant, you can give those services of company secretary, also sitting in chartered accountant office, and also of the cost accountant where cost audit is required or various cost calculations are required. So this is very, very important. And at this stage, I would say that yes, we all have to see that if you want to do this, I'll come to that when I come on micro level. But let me tell the importance of coming togetherness and joining as a partner, not one part, not two partners, not three partners, but more partners. Out of 3,25,000, there are 1,60,000 in practice and 87,000 are proprietors. Can you believe it? Just 30,000 partnership firms who are having two partners. Just 332 partnership having five to 10 partners. 
I mean, 10 to 20 partners, and only 40 partners, 40, 40 partnership firms where partners are between 21 to 50, and above 50, only nine, which are by and large big four. But imagine 10 to 20, 20 to 50 are just 330 and 40. What is this? This shows lack of confidence in Tursi. What is mine is mine. I want to earn everything. I want to grab everything and I want to take home everything. That's the philosophy. That's the cycle. That is required to be changed. When your chairman mentioned about talking on networking, instead of networking, genuine closeness and coming up with a partnership is most important. And if we do that, nothing better. In the morning, I was addressing Delhi NIRC. And there I shared the same view. That when you are young and after passing your CA, when you are deciding to get married, you have options of so many girls. You take interview of so many girls and then decide a partner. She also must have interviewed many boys. And finally, she agreed with you and you agreed with her. Once you agree and marry her, all your weaknesses and plus points are accepted by her. And all her negative and plus points are accepted by you. Same is the situation for partnership. Partnership is like marriage. Don't do partnership just for some small work or immediately grabbing something. Or because the tender requires that you have to have a partnership, let me do immediately partnership. Get me this tender. After that, dekha jayega. No dekha jayega. Do genuine partnership. And with a division of intellectual level and work level. What I mean by that? One should be exclusively in audits and accounting. Second should be exclusive on direct tax, income tax. Third should be exclusively on indirect tax, GST. Fourth should be exclusive on banking and finance. At least four partners you must join. Then, on, then only you can say, I'm one stop destiny. I'm a complete business service provider. He was a businessman. The moment he decides to start the business, he would need a GST registration number. So you need a GST expert in your office. The moment that is done, you need PAN number and TAN number. So you need an income tax card. The moment that is done, after introduction of his capital, he need finance from banks or financial institutions. So you need a CA who is expert in getting finance from them. And once that is done, business is started, he needs a person to write his account, monitor his account, and do it audit, and then file income tax returns. You can't be master of all. You can be jerk of all. And jacks are not preferred by businessmen. They want all masters so that they get base services. And once they earn, they don't hesitate to pay. And we should also not hesitate to charge them. That's the art of networking. That's the art of getting stronger. That's the art of getting larger. And if that is done, I will come back to you how this outsourcing and export of services would help if you are a partnership firm. So this is with regard to that. Now let me go to the next most important crucial aspect. What is the future trend of accounting? And there are again five crucial aspects in this. Future trend of accounting. Finance factory. Once end-to-end -end automation enabled by technologies ranging from cloud-based ERP to blockchain and from robotic process automation to cognitive tools is implemented. The manual process and rework within the finance will disappear soon. This would be shift from finance as a function to that of a factory conducting touchless and seamless transactions. All those red color books is now a history. You hardly see any manual books of account. You hardly see any manual entry. You hardly see any manual vouchers. We had invited an institute in Ahmedabad branch, one charter from Bangalore, who has no drawers in any of the tables of his, in the office of a chartered accountant. Entire office is paperless. Maybe it takes some five, seven years for us to go up to that stage. But we must start at least to see that I reduce my dependency on papers and handwork, and I shift everything on technology. I shift everything on paperless and on software and computers. That's very important. Over the years, traditional processes are disappearing. So the silos around them, eliminating the traditional handoff in transaction processing. The focus of finance has shifted to design, configuration, maintenance of systems, use of algorithms, and cognitive agents embedded on desktop have placed a premium for attracting and retaining finance talent with technological skills. Digital technology, 
will free up capacity enabling finance to become more integrated with the business and leading the business to increase its expectations in finance so this is very important first point with regard to five crucial points of future trend second point is the role of finance with operational automation and automated finance is focused will shift to supplying business insight and helping provide differential service to customer by acting as catalyst and strategist process is involved in budgeting planning forecasting which was historically required manually intensive end of month heroics will become increasingly routine as a result of automation providing a more scenario planning and using advanced analytics to help solve problems and develop predictive capabilities instead of merely reporting historical numbers the enterprise will become more intelligent and the best example is our own credit card own amazon the way we do online ordering the way we do online purchasing the way we now do online order for food how easy fast and swift it has become this swiftness this speed is now required in accounting sector this cleanliness tidiness perfectness is now required in auditing sector auditing sector and that is the future trend there will be no place when you will open the telephone dial the number and talk to him just push the button straight away the person is there on the other side with his in his office just like now you are viewing me across the south india same way this will be the scenario that is seen for the financial transactions across the country third is finance cycles this is very very crucial and important periodic reporting will be replaced by technology designed to enable the continuous tracking of sales cash flow inventory level to better drive strategic and operational decisions eventually finance will be tasked with monitoring the machines reconciliation process that are running continuously auditing organization would likely need employees who have finance and accounting background but also technology acumen including data mining data science coding etc go on the days that managing director or the boss or the partner would ask you monthly balance sheet monthly trial balance weekly data collection now they want day to day online every single foreign country buyer now in australia the system is in the warning the person the businessman has on his table when he opens his office and opens his laptop today's latest position of his finance that is daily profit and loss account daily balance sheet daily trial balance my daily collections due daily payments due and daily recoveries made this is now on ongoing basis day to day basis and if that is not done by chartered accountants who else can do it so this is where the tremendous potential is there in the future the fourth is erp ERP vendors migrate their platforms onto the cloud. ERP landscape is undergoing dramatic change, moving from a focus on data capture and data storage of an enterprise performance management platform that enables identification and tracking of KPIs and profitability analysis. Cloud is also driving the need for microservices to integrate more rapidly and real time with other enterprise platforms such as hr performance management and analytics emergence of a greater and more robust microservices will create new and unique way to drive value in finance and finance team will focus more on providing leaders information they need to make smarter and speeder decision businessmen cannot wait now for next day businessman can't afford to wait for next week he want quick details quick analysis and in turn quick decision to be implemented in his business entity and therefore the speed is becoming extremely extremely important and last the fifth point workforce and take away the combination of so many dramatic changes will transform the role of cfo and employees with finance organization talent models will drive more work towards data science 
business analysis, storytellers with finance organizations. As the nature of work transitions broadly from routine duties to acknowledge based responsibilities, finance employees will need to develop a customer service mentality and create opportunities for collaboration outside finance. So I hope you understood what are the future needs, future expectations. And if we are not ready enough, competent enough, and we are also not fast enough, you cannot pick up the stake. I was given a very nice example that now in the airport, the moment you come out from the aircraft, if you want to, want to go to exit for your baggage, if you walk slowly, you walk along with all other passengers. But then there is a parallel road running on the level. If you are on that, and on that also you walk, you walk faster, you reach faster. So even if you are at a good speed, you need a technology to take you like an escalator to take you further and faster. So if you move with others, you will be with them with the crowd. But if you want to be ahead of others, you have to move and walk along with escalator. That is where your competence will prove and your fastness will be in a position to satisfy the takers. Now, recent amendment and trends in accounting standard is very, very important, friend. What is now last two, three important things I want to tell you before I conclude on macro aspect that yes, accounting standard is extremely important to be known by every single chartered accountant who is in accounting business or export business of services. Agreement between the government and Republic of Brunei has been done just on March 19. We have signed it on 9th of March 2020. And Brunei Dar es Salaam, we have done this agreement by which our accounting standard will be followed by them. We will teach them accounting standard. Now, when I say we will teach them accounting standard, ICI, who will teach them? Our own chartered accountants, you and me, youngsters more, not me. So it is for a young chartered accountant to take up these challenges, take up these kind of assignments from ICI and see how best we can give service to outside country. The moment you do it outside country, it is the export of your services. What are the issues now pertaining to this industry? What are major hurdles to do export of services by a charter accountant? And there are three issues on that. And you will be able to understand what are they. And once you understand and digest that, you will be ready. And from Monday onward, you will say, let me start doing the export. And you will work on that. What are those three important issues pertaining for the export? First is, Restrictions on advertising and marketing by Indian chartered accountants under our code of ethics of ICAI and internationally accepted rules. This needs to be reviewed. Our new code of ethics is being coming. It is to come from 1st July, but now council is debating whether it should come from 1st July 20 or maybe some late. But whatever it is, new code of ethics is now being introduced. And there they've realized the importance. And if I shout at the top of the voice as a central council member that, yes, we should grow, we should be like big four, we should do the export. How the other party is going to know about your competencies and benefits and uh, advantages available with you unless I tell them. When you see in the TV that this is the new toothpaste, this is the new washing powder and it continues to hammering on you, you go and try and buy it to see how it is. Same day, the buyer, the taker, the stakeholder must know who are the person service providers. No as an Indian chartered accountants. But then we are not allowed to do advertise. We can't market. So in ICI, we'll do marketing of Indian chartered accountants as a team. And they will allow certain other relaxation in the new code of ethics by which we'll be in a position to convey our competence to outside people. That yes, here is a chartered accountant who can do the work with you. So this is to be reviewed. If Indian CA in their own right aspire to have a global presence, it is very much necessary to adopt internationally accepted and applied policies under the laws of country. Instances are there that all in countries like UK, USA, everywhere, you can see the big holding of all the big force. They do under the name of consulting firm. They do in the name of private limited company. But the moment you come out of the airport, you will see the big building of 100 story or 50 story and a huge name of Deloitte, huge name of ENY. Why? If that advertisement is allowed and a person is attracted to enter in that chamber, 
why Indian Chartered Accountant should not be allowed to do some advertisement, some marketing by which a foreigner would come to the office of Indian Chartered Accountant. Point two is current guidelines with regard to the ICI on the company secretaries. Guidelines require that the name should include the name of the proprietor. Now, this is also important. I am not taking much of your time. But the restrictions on giving the name of the chartered accountant firm is also important. Now, there is no person called Ernst and no person called Young in existence. Still, firm is known and Ernst and Young. Now, earlier ENY and now only EY. But EY is the word. KPMG is the word. Deloitte or Skinner. Skinner has become only Deloitte. Why you want to insist that no, all those CA who are member and who are partners, I will give the name of the firm only on that name. So this kind of attitude, this kind of approach, also the relaxation, being past president, I know there are various restrictions. I don't want to comment upon the limitations that are available or that are there under code of ethics. But if this is opened up, yes, we can definitely go ahead with and advertise market and at least is not advertising market, make known that here are the Indian firms, here are Indian chartered accountants who are willing, more than willing and competent and capable to do the work which you are doing in your country at double the price or three times more the price than I would do it for you. So with this friends now, having said for almost more than an hour, let me last half an hour complete the ground reality address to you on micro level i have talked all with regard to macro and as i said when i talk macro level everybody feels blah blah it is very simple to say very nice to give lectures but how do i start my software export my accounting and auditing export and i really do export of my services what are the important things in that note down if you want to note down if you want to what is a must if you want from Monday onwards to start thinking and thereafter implementing export of services. First and foremost, absolute confidence, knowledge of English language. That is the biggest weakness of 75% of Indian chartered accountants. They are not poor, but extremely poor English language. And when I say poor, not that it is only easy to speak, easy to write. You should be fluent. And fluent not only in writing, not only in typing, not only in speaking, but in every single manner. In the sense that even if you are sleeping at the midnight two hour and someone wakes you up by giving a hard slap, the language or the bad language from your mouth should come out in English language. That should be your proficiency in the language. That is must. Point number two, what you need second most important is your office premises. I've been telling since last 25 years in my various lectures that a chartered accountant is known by his dress, address, and dash. You should be always well dressed. As you can see, your secretary is on tie, your chairman is also well dressed. Every single person, when you meet another authority, another chartered accountant, another client, another big person, he should be first impressed with your dress. And the first impression is your last impression. If you meet him in jeans and t-shirt and chapels, your 50% of the value is written down at the very first sight. Similarly, like dress, the most important matter for any foreigner is your office premises. And when I say office premises, two aspects, the area and the location. In which area it is location? Bangalore, MG Road, wow. But some Annapolis Gully and some exubic district Bangalore, the foreigner will not be impressed. What is this Annapolis Gully or what is this Annapolis Street? It has to be a prominent building, prominent street, prominent road. Your office should be located there. And area. Gone are the days that you work in an office with 600 square feet or 500 square feet. Half of it is your cabin and balance half. You have two or three persons sitting outside, including one stand or one pew and one assistant. Gone are those days. Even if you are 1,000% competent, you are not going to get work in such kind of office. You need a larger office. You need to demonstrate you have so many computers. You need to need and demonstrate you have so many workstations. And therefore, you can't do it as a proprietor or two partners. You have to have four partners. And that's the third point, size of your firm. 
you say yes i am 40 years old i have this 10 degrees i am master in software i have done all possible courses under technology but if you are not having sufficient strength in your form you are not going to get the work therefore minimum four to five to six partners is a must and when i say why four to six partners because he wants to be assured that in absence of one or two persons his work is not going to be affected his work is not going to be stopped his work is not going to be slowed down there is someone else who will immediately pick up and do the work because what he wants he sends the things to you in the evening next day morning he wants it on his table you can't tell him sir i was affected by covid 19 i was not allowed to leave my office i'm sorry i couldn't do the work next day morning on his computer if the accounting work asked to you is not sent say your next day your cancellation letter will be received they are that strict they are that ruthless they are ruthless even if you are close with him for two three years one such small mistake or two such small mistake and you are out the strength of the firm strength of the size of the firm and partners is the third most important thing fourth is the proficiency in the subject of accounting and auditing i can claim i am too good in taxation my 90 percent of the lectures are on income tax but if i'm not good in accounts i cannot survive therefore in taladi in taladi i had my brother who is master in accounts and auditing you have to have a proficiency in accounting and auditing or a partner who is proficient in account and auditing and if you don't have it you can't get it be very clear i am trying to be equally ruthless to you this is the first fundamental four elements having come to this what is stage number two stage two is the knowledge bank with you knowledge bank with you what is knowledge bank you must be your partners must be your employees your accountant must be in full knowledge in full knowledge of entire computer software microsoft excel tally quickbook zero and various kinds of software write down the three important accounting software that are necessary to do accounting and auditing work number one is your tally number two is quickbook and number three is zero xero these two are the latest international accounting software just tally is there in india at 90 percent of the small and medium sized entities quickbook and zero is there in usa and uk and australia 95 percent 95 percent so besides knowledge of tally you must have knowledge of this two accounting software and mind well don't tell the person that i will learn moment i'll get the work he will not wait for you to learn at your at his course and then you start serving when the client comes to you you should be ready with the knowledge after advice i've been giving to all young don't think that I don't know GST. The moment a client will come, I will open the book of GST, I will open my computer and I will advise him. If the client comes to you, you should be ready with the answer. You are ready with the knowledge, client may not come. But if the client come, you should be ready with the knowledge. That's the difference. So you should be ready with the, all these letters. And along with that, the most important thing that they expect from all citizens for that matter from all citizens is extremely extremely important very very necessary courtesy and politeness the courtesy and politeness in your tone the courtesy and courtesy and politeness in your behavior the courtesy and politeness when you receive them when you see them off every single thing they mark they note and they give marking according to how you receive them how you treat them, how you provide them with the snacks or lunch or dinner, how you entertain them, what are your explanations, how you make them satisfied when they visit your office. In all, courtesy and politeness also matters a lot. So this is extremely important. So that's point number two, complete start to the knowledge. Point three is investment 
and expenditure capacity. And when I say your capacity, not only your bank balance, but your willingness to spend and withdraw from the bank. So capacity to make expenditure and investment is third most important factor that is required if you come in this service of export. And what is it that? In all kinds of services, what you need is a hardware, you need is a software, and you need a very good search engine. So you must have sufficient. If you have a thousand square feet area, you must have at least five, seven computers and a computer station. You must have all these three softwares, which I told you, and other software for tax and accounting work that you come across. If you don't have this, it will be very difficult for you to convince your client that you are competent to render the service with which the speed with which he needs it. So that is very important. Second aspect, expenditure on foreign visit. Having met with you or having discussing with you on online or on webinar or on uh, telephone, he is happy with you. You show him and demonstrate your office that this is my office area, these are my staff, these are my partners, and he's impressed. And then he calls to you, okay, come down to New York. Tuesday 5 p.m. or Tuesday 11 a.m. we'll meet. You should be ready to book the ticket and fly to New York immediately at the next available flight or on the day and time when he is giving it to you. That one lakh or two lakh rupees of foreign visit is to be considered as an investment and not an expenditure. To be very, very clear in that. To be very, very clear on that. So, earlier thing, moment I get the fees, I'll buy a computer. Moment I get a big audit, I'll hire more persons. Moment I get the GST work, I will install the software of GST. So 99% utter accountant's tendency and psychology is earn the income first or get me the confirmed contract or confirmed work, then I will spend. In export of services, you have to spend first and earn later. So willingness is extremely, extremely important. Then comes the next point. How do you come in the contact of it? Mm -hmm. Having said these three things, you have done all these things. You are ready to spend. You have good office. You are four partners. You are knowledgeable. You know the software. You have purchased the software, installed it. You are ready with everything. But where is the client? How to get clients? That's the fifth important point. Or the fourth important. And that is, you have to contact foreign chapters. We have more than 20 foreign chapters. You have to contact your foreign friends. You have to contact your foreign chartered accountant colleagues. They are the persons who are going to get the work. You have to tell them, so many chartered accounts from Dubai have got the work because their counterpart, their friend, has gone and settled in Dubai. They got the work. Just like that in Ahmedabad, one of the biggest person who is in export of service, number one in Gujarat, his relative is there in Australia and he's getting substantive work. So in such kind of thing, you have to find out your relative, your cousin, your distant cousin, your friend, your colleague, your counterpart, foreign chapter, chartered accountants. And you should be happy to share fees with them officially. Within the code of conduct, there's nothing wrong. He may charge from that party. Okay, I'm getting a work of $10,000. I'll charge my $2,000. Fine, don't worry. You are happy with that $8,000 also. Let him get that $2,000 from him. Or you tell him, okay, we enter a contract. It is not a commission, but consulting or affiliation fee, which I will pay you if you are having a connection between the supplier and the agent between two of us. So this kind of efforts, this kind of expenditure are must to find out the work. And... You should be ready. Next point is, fifth point, you should be ready for rejection and rejection. It is not that if 100 charter accounts are selling out of 500, tomorrow decide, okay, all will be 100. Maybe 25, there are four partners. 25 of you decide, okay, let us start. Let us go to Australia. Let us go to UK. You go there. You demonstrate there. But ultimately, the client is not happy. Or otherwise, this happened to my firm in a UK work. 
we lost very heavy. We got the work from him. Contract we executed. Work was done as per the details given. But end of the time when we raised the bill and gave him all the details, he said, no, 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 no. There are so many mistakes. For all the five, six months, he did not find any mistakes. When the payment time came, he found out so many mistakes. He said, I'm issuing you a notice. You have not done the work as per my requirement. Why should I pay to you? Sometimes you get this kind of client also. Just as in business, you have bad debt. Your clients are bad debt. We should be prepared for such bad debt also. So you should be mentally and financially ready for this. It's not like a normal charter account practice. At the moment I do the audit, I'm bound to get my 10 or 15,000 rupees. If client is too sticky, it may reduce 5 or 10% after bargaining. But your fees is not going anywhere. Here, there are chances, not many chances, very bleak chances. But chances are there. But suppose you lose tomorrow 5, 10, 15 lakhs of rupees. You should be calm, composed, and ready to find out another client at 25 lakhs and set off your this 10 lakh loss. But that is very much required. And that has to be there. So this is most important fifth aspect. Next important aspect is your quality and finished product. No no with capital letters. In every single foreign assignment, everything to be supplied and given is to be hundred percent. There is nothing like ninety nine point ninety nine percent. The quality and the result and the final product that you give counts and auditing it has to be 100 percent perfect chalta hai ye to chalega sir baad mein revert kar dega dekh lete hai correction kar denge that is just not allowed so you have to be extremely extremely precise the person working also has to be tremendously cautious and careful even a full stop and a comma mistake here and there they get upset they don't like it if you see their papers in file, the papers are so perfectly filed, you will feel it has come from the factory. Whereas it is in his drawer since last more than 12 months. But you would file it so nicely, you will not feel that we are 0.1 millimeter one and the other paper is differentiated. That is the perfectness they are enjoying. They have the habit of enjoying that perfectness and they expect that perfectness from us. So that is very important. Next important point is timely delivery. Not only you give him the best product on a plate or nicely served, but it has to be on time. When he says tomorrow 9 o'clock I want it, it should be there at 8.55, but not at 9.05. They don't tolerate even one minute or five minutes delay. Be very clear. When I'm saying this, I'm saying with authority, I'm saying with experience, and I'm saying with having learned from so many service providers. So it is not just to make you frightened or make give any threats to you, but you should be mentally capped, ready for all this kind of perfectness in your heart. In India, what is happening? We will see tomorrow. Let me see. Are guilty ho I will correct it tomorrow. What is, heaven is not going to loss. You have not made any loss. Why you are shouting? Why you are so upset? All that kinds of things are just not allowed or entertained. So that is timely delivery. And last, but most important is secrecy. Last and most important is the secrecy. Whatever you do is of utmost, utmost secrecy between you and him. No third person, not even your wife, not even your brother should know about it. Only those persons who are assigned the work should know what they are doing. And thereby, if you have got the work from USA, and he said, write down the accounts of Tom, Jerry, and Mike, the person who writes in the account of Tom should not know what your next person in your office is doing for Mike. And the third person who is doing for Jerry should not know what my another CA who is writing books of Tom is doing. Tom will, Tom work will be doing by A and A only will know it and his partner will know it. No other person in the office. Jerry's work if done by B, only B will know it. No A and no C and the partner or the main person is responding. No other person should know it. And you also have to be very careful. You don't tell others, oh, I'm doing the work of Tom and Jerry from US. Suppose I've got the work from 
कॉफे काफी डे दैट्स अ क्लोज सो लेट मी गिव टारबक फ्रॉम यूएसए और एनी डोमिनोस फ्रॉम यूएसए आई कैन प्रोक्लेम एंड से ओ माय गॉड आई हैव गॉट प्लेंटी डोमिनोस फ्रॉम यूएसए फ्रॉम न्यू यॉर्क आई एम डूइंग प्लेंटी डोमिनोस जीएसटी वर्क सिलटेक्स वर्क आई मीन वेट वर्क नो यू डोंट टेल टू एनी if you tell and if the client comes to know that you are telling this to others he would just not like it he would like to close the day that is the secrecy that they expect from you so friend these are seven different important characters which i shared with you and therefore you must understand and appreciate having said this let me conclude that what are the benefits benefits are i can use the word unimaginable or extremely extremely good and rewarding the fees that you get from all these foreign entities is minimum two times if not three times more than what you get for the same identical work in india that's i benefit number one benefit two you can expand your practice you can increase your office increase the size of the office increase the area of the office and you get a recognition in the society in the front advantage three you are earning higher you are earning more you are paying more tax and you are again in a high slab of income tax you get recognition from government number 4 you are earning foreign exchange for the country so that's another contribution to the nation's economy number 5 moment you are generating this foreign exchange for the country you are getting the benefit of sapc so service export promotion council will give you 7% of the total fees received that you are bringing so never reduce the fee don't try to get the fee in dubai or in any other place okay give me their country bring all the fees officially in india bring maximum uh, white income in your books of account show your strength by earning more and do not try to find out any shortcuts of any nature whatsoever so friend if these things are done i can tell you yes you can start the work now coming to the point which men mentioned initially i have already dealt with but let me tell you this again please for god's sake don't jump into this don't try and waste your time if you are a proprietor or two partners firm you must be minimum four or more partners if you are two partners you should have at least four or six chartered accountants of competence and capabilities and seniority then you can do it do i don't always insist huh? but you should have a good strength so partners are number one but if you don't have partners good strength of chartered accountant not a person who is not a chartered accountant whatsoever intelligent and experienced he may be they also value the chartered accountant and they want the chartered accountant so that's point 1 point 2 as i mentioned in the uh, uh, all these aspects learn the english learn knowledge learn software learn accounting learn various the techniques and do that third think big and then only you can grow big this is the fundamental principle of a profession as come if you will not think big you will never grow big you have to think big that yes as i understand i don't in the bangalore but in gujarat i am saying not only in amdavad majority of the chartered accountants who are practicing for last 10 years to 25 years they are in the range of receipt of 25 lakhs to 50 lakhs 20 lakhs to 50 lakhs they are not growing more than that imagine working practicing since 10 20 30 years and receipt is not able to reach to 1 crore at all if they are two partners or one partner now you want to play in that role in that level in that limited area fine if you are satisfied with that but this is not only for money friends this is a tremendous job satisfaction is a tremendous reward to your knowledge and having become a chartered accountant you are doing something great something extra something big something new something novel so for that this is very important so think on that line have more ca with you have more hands with you have more knowledge with you have more money spending capacity with you and if that is done you will be the go ahead so friend i think i have done with both macro aspects of the services as well as micro aspect of the services it's already one and a half hour since we have been non stop speaking so it's a uh, time for me to take a rest and invite questions or queries if any if there are any i'll be happy to answer them 
yes sir it was a uh, uh, it was a very good session sir uh, it is very learn to know that uh, the accounting services finds a place for accounting and auditing service yeah it is uh, and we have still scope up 10 million 1 million accountants is required for the as per wto estimates uh, still indian chartered accountants having more scope the only thing is the as you said establishment and uh, how to approach maybe lakuna members uh, especially i heard as a chairman of bangalore branch many women chartered accountants are missing they may take they are very talented people they will take rest for the of their family concern or migrant from one place to other place uh, for them how they can uh, approach and get it the come into this picture sir okay way? will you repeat i didn't get you will you repeat sir many women chartered accountants they are working for the some time in the big uh, firms and all one or the other reason or family reason or migrants from uh, Place to other place. They will find a difficulty to establish their uh, practice. They want to start. But therefore, then it's the export of service. They can ship it from home. They can whether they can do it individually to using yeah. the talents. No, I appreciate. I appreciate and with with full respect to all graceful ladies who are listening as well as the one who has sent a question and others. Let me tell you very very clearly. Woman chartered accountant, if she is a woman, she has to be very clear. Am I a working lady? Am I a housewife as well as working? If you are both, meaning thereby, in Hindi, we say, dood or dai, dono mein paon rakhna. You can't have your legs both in milk as well as in curd. Take a decision. You want curd or you want milk? You can't have both. But for ladies, firstly, you should be substantially working woman and a very reasonable at Housewife. I am not saying desert your husband, desert your family, and do it with your family duties. But once you are doing your family duties, there are inherent restrictions and inherent uh, limitations in performance. Suppose you have decided to sit down and work. That okay, by tomorrow morning uh, to evening, I'll finish with this up and post it back to USA. And your son fell sick. Father is not going to take him to hospital. It is the lady and the mother who is going to take him to the hospital. The whole three hours are wasted. The work will not be finished within the time and you will invite the problem. That is so far as the export work is concerned. But let us talk of the domestic work. Domestic work, my feeling is, because I have also many, many, many article, lady articles in my office. In my office, the total strength of article was 150. Then I have almost 60 to 65 lady articles, girl articles. And when the time comes to send them, said Ahmedabad for audit, their parents come and say, oh, it is difficult. How can she stay overnight? But if these kind of problems are not that with South Indian girls and South Indian ladies, they should start working at home with various kind of charter accountant firms. And they should not hesitate to, to start with, do it at a lesser remuneration. If you are getting going to a form, charter account firm's office and do at 25,000 rupees, do sitting at your home at 20,000 rupees. Once you are accustomed and well versed with the work, and once you are satisfied with your deliverables, and the employer is satisfied with your uh, all deliverables and working done, then you can take a call whether you want to go to the office and do the work. Sir, this SCPC registration, is there any minimum requirement to achieve every year export? No. It can be $100, it can be $100,000. Yes, for SCPC, there is a requirement. For uh, getting the license, there is a requirement, minimum requirement. I'll just check up. It's not handy with me. I don't want to bluff. But there is a limitation for minimum uh, receipt if you want to be registered, if you want to get the uh, claim of the license, maybe thousand uh, dollar or fifty, but I, I am not able to recollect exactly. But I, I'll send the reply to you tomorrow by mail. Okay, sir. Thank you, 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 sir. Thank you
Okay. And sir, that uh, you have mentioned in your speech that foreign languages for the working because the main partners can uh, learn who has to be exactly learn up language only any, partners. Any, 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 any one young partner. See, me and you at the age of 40, 50, 60 cannot learn the foreign language. So the young chartered accounts are the best persons to learn the language. And institute has started foreign language classes. So just like forensic audit, ISA, uh, all other, uh, so many, uh, this internal audit class, bank audit, uh, concurrent audit classes are there and they are being attended majority by youngsters. This foreign learning languages should be attended and learned by youngsters. One person in the office knows foreign language, that is and I tell you from my experience that the fees paid and the work that are that have chances to come from European countries like France, Italy, Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, and other European countries are much more than from US and UK. There, there is already a competition and people available. But these are all virgin areas. Similarly, like in Africa, Africa is total virgin. And if South Indians can uh, conquer African countries, nothing better. Okay. That's a, there is a question from the member. As a practitioner, how do you approach for... Uh, one second, sir, that question. Okay. Whether blockchain and robotic process automation will reduce the work of accountants? Uh, over a period of time, it will reduce the time hours of the accountant, but not the workload of the accountant. You will be able to do it faster, you will be able to do it smoother, and you will be able to do errorless. That's the biggest advantage of blockchain. But that will not reduce the work of accountant. You will get more work, and you will be able to do more work because of this technology. Is there any threats to the accountants uh, from this blockchain? Uh... Software and uh, robotic yeah, automation. Non, yes, yes, yes. Non, non professional accountants who are writing accounts with hand, they will definitely have the problem. But all those who are doing tele, they will be very easily able to learn the blockchain technology and they will be able to implement it also. So, what is happening that now one part time charter, one part time accountant can write two or three entities' accounts at the most maximum with blockchain facility and other, if he's competent and fast enough and smart enough. He'll be able to write of 10 people. Sir, as a practitioner, how do you approach for outsourced, outsourced accounting works from entities? I already explained. I think the honorable member might not have heard it or might not be attentive. Number one is your friends. Number two, your relatives. Number three, the foreign chapter representatives, foreign chapter office bearers. Number four, email and other mode by which you approach them and write them. Are there any websites like freelancer.com or any other websites? No, uh, where we can no, get... no, 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 no website as of now. We have asked Institute, SCP also trying to work out because you will be happy to know that SCPC and ICAI are entering into MOU on Tuesday 30th June. So after this MOU, we will put special efforts and I am singularly lucky that I'll be representing SCPC as chairman next year and past president of the ICI. So I will try to see that how best the alignment can be done and how best opportunities are made available to Indian chartered accountants for getting more work through such websites and other platforms. Thank you. Yes, sir. That is uh, from ICI also. It is required to enlighten the chartered accountants and aware because the people uh, even the very talented person sitting in uh, rural place to practicing because of many reasons. Yes. He may not more, but as in export of service, uh, he can render the services and he can earn for the our uh, earnings. Yeah, strengthen the nation. Uh, it is on the very well session, sir. It was a right time to address for the all our member. And even our members are in a little bit in negative mode after this corona. And uh, as you mentioned, the advocates are facing problem and chartered accounts even they are working. Because many chartered accounts work remote edit. They have done it for the bank edit. Recently concluded. Uh, I, I, I can share with you. There are some groups which are prevailing in Mumbai. They have certain issues against ICAI. 
they have inquired and they have registered more than 200 chartered accountants more than 200 chartered from mumbai itself who are approaching ici benevolent fund that since last three months we have no income we have no source of income we have problem of eating please give us now this is unfortunate state of affairs but it is there yes yeah, sir but uh, i am proud that uh, we from karnataka members uh, for national pm care fund also contributed much and even the cm chief minister relief fund also we have done our contribution many our chartered accountants contributed for the food more than 21000 food in during the corona time they have served yes uh, yes we have also details share the details to the csr committee of ICI. oh that's very good that's very good congratulations so uh, proud to be part of this uh, uh, members of bangor uh, chartered accountants and chief minister personally is uh, tweeted and uh, thanked our uh, all members of the institute of chartered accounts of india you mentioned very good uh, very the good. problem you right, is the said that 200 people have approached for benevolent fund that is the grown reality, but not of the many chartered accountants coming up with uh, these issues because those are new practitioners and young members joined industry. They are really facing the problem regarding that institute to take some action because we are not asking any assistant at free of cost at uh, subsidized cost. Here. Even they can create a fund at uh, subsidized rates and say you can say 6% or something. If you uh, give a financial assistant, it will be a great helpful to the members, sir, especially a young mm -hmm. members, those are in practice, and very senior members, those are in industry and uh, left the industry and they started practice now. They are really facing the problem, sir. That's a real uh, problem. Okay. No, I entirely agree. Yes. And I can share with you, Institute is also very conscious about it. We have limitation with the manual and fund. Institute has a good fund, but manual and fund does not have that much of the fund. So your local central council member Sir, we, we, are also, we have also we have to learn to contribute also the seeking when we are earning much the institute is every president and every chairman is asking kindly contribute to the benalop fund uh, this is a situation it has made us realize all the chartered accountants uh, whenever we are earning in good position at least we can contribute that may be increasing trend if you have in huge amount that may be uh, sir, with that note, uh, I am very much thankful for uh, your session, uh, for this uh, right time for the members and you are also given tips for the Human Chartered Accountants. So, on behalf of uh, all the managing committee members and uh, all viewers, more than 400 viewers, uh, I wholeheartedly thank uh, and uh, as I said, uh, because you are now becoming a past president of ICI and you are promoting to the chairman of uh, this export commission is now uh, like for this pitama for the all young generation chartered accountants so thank you very much for your session i request our bangalore bench uh, secretary shri srinivas to formally render the vote of thanks to the uh, uh, today's speaker and uh, all the members one, one sir, question is yes, what is the minimum hourly rate let me tell this friend that institute of chartered accountants has published a detailed chart of various kinds of services and fees to be charged. Please visit the website. The website, there are three categories. Category A, big cities. Category B, medium cities. And category C, more in small towns. So from whatever place you are, you can find out how much to charge for tax audit, how much to charge for income tax return, how much to charge for GST return. More than 50, 70 services are mentioned and minimum fees that you must charge is mentioned. So you, to client also, you can show that this is my minimum rate. And it is very necessary. See, with utmost respect to our profession, if you go to a saloon for haircut, or if you go to another place in a spa, they have a sideboard. That body massage, 1,200 rupees. This massage, 5,000 rupees. And they don't charge you 100 rupees less than that. This is the rate of the union. Same way, we should be united. That this is what my institute has recommended. I will not charge less than 1,500 rupees per hour. If you are in the mid-top. I will not charge less than 3,000 rupees per hour. That yes, is how sir. It is all to, uh, our but that is not sir. followed by all the members, sir. That is the problem. And, uh, and there is a huge competition among the members in the market. That is the biggest problem. That is the biggest yeah, problem. Huge market, cut road competition is there. And uh, sometimes I can say some of the uh, pieces are not realistic. Uh, what is happening in the market? 
if you say that fee is upfront the, to the client client may not turn up that fear also is there when they were practicing and one more point we are telling about the benevolent fund uh, i think uh, you can tell that regarding benevolent yeah. fund. yes so ICI is also conscious about it that how to increase the fund about it they are regularly appealing all branches regional councils are appealing but institutes approaching the and how this institute can increase the contribution in the benevolent fund so your local central council member will be in a position to tell you if government agrees with what what is the thought process of ICI then substantial funds can be given to benevolent fund and more amount and to larger people larger amount can be given no if not free what i suggest uh, at, at subsidized cost of 6% of interest at least from yeah, the creating a fund yes. or attaching with some banks if yes. you give that kind of financial assistance they can survive yes. and come up certainly certainly and ICI is very okay. sincerely thinking yeah. okay sir must kindly under the vote of thanks sir uh, thank you for your excellent presentation you explained in detail uh, how export of service needs to be in point wise even minute point you discussed and uh, you explained like a elder caring brother uh, really we are uh, grateful to for your presentation and the uh, team what we can understand from your uh, speech is a uh, teamwork the bigger the team the bandwidth of the team bigger you will grow bigger think big and grow big that's what i can uh, uh, really i thank uh, on behalf of bangalore branch of icf for your excellent presentation and uh, caring uh, words i uh, and i also thank all the participants actively participate in today's program sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir and i wish you uh, advance in happy chartered accountants day 72nd thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. and same to you thank you thank you sir